All right, on today's episode of Launch Retard, we're getting back to work on the Monte Carlo. That would be such a funny name for a show, <laughs> but I don't know if we could really get away with it anymore. Uh, but yeah, uh, hoping to get back to work on the Monte Carlo a little bit today. I've been wanting to slam this thing together for a little while now so that it at least fires up and I can move it around, uh, which really shouldn't take much. It's an old carburetor, small block. Uh, the ignition and everything's all wired. So it will actually fire up. Need to put the fuel tank and run the fuel lines to it. Um, I think I have to run a power wire to the pump. Not a huge deal. But I gotta put this transmission in it. I was hoping to paint it before putting it in. I cleaned it the other day. It was super nasty. Like unbelievably nasty. And uh, I was gonna paint it gold because why not? That's sick. But I think just in the desire to get the car kind of together. I'm gonna leave it bare like that. But I've got a good portion of everything I think I need. I mean, I've got the transmission. I've got a brand new torque converter from Jegs. This is not their uh, XHD, this is their basic one. So this was like 180 bucks. I've got a drive shaft for it. The transmission cross member is behind the Firebird over there. And then I think probably to keep things a little simple so that I don't have to do much fabrication, I'm probably not going to use this shifter. I wanted to use this one. I really like how it looks. I think it's different because mostly off-road guys use this. Um, and I thought that having something big and bulky like that would kind of make up, it would visually take up the space of the missing console, but it's wider than the tunnel a little bit, which makes it kind of a pain. I think for the time being, I will shelf this and this is why I don't like to sell things. I'm always repurposing things. I had a ton of people wanting to buy this, but oh no, no. <laughs> so I'll probably end up just throwing that in there for the time being. So the biggest thing is going to be getting the transmission in today because the trailblazer's on the hoist, the new project that I'm probably not gonna reveal yet. I got something planned for that. Um, they're tying up the hoist, so we're gonna be doing this on the ground. I might, well, I'm thinking about it. If I was smart, I'd try to get the shift cable bracket on it while it's here so I could check everything instead of laying on my back under the car. Yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, I think I got to set up this should work. I'm going to try to test it real quick to make sure everything's smooth. Reverse, neutral, drive, second, first. Seems good. So now I can put a bunch of blocks on the jack to get the front of the car up high enough to put the ramps under it. And then uh, we should have just enough room with the ramps under it <laughs> to squeak the transmission under there, rustle it onto the jack, and then get it up in place. I think it sounds a lot harder than it actually will end up being, but I'm sure I'll prove myself wrong.
All right, so I don't remember where we left off with the Monte Carlo. It's been like a week and a half, maybe. Still don't have the trains in the car. A lot of things just keep coming up. So to try to kind of rush to get the thing together as quickly as I can, because the car's just been sitting for too long without being able to actually drive it. So I got the fuel tank in the car the other day. I'm going to drop it off the jack stands and we're going to get it loaded up and take it over to my dad's place and throw it on his hoist so that we can uh, teamwork on it and try and jam the thing together because the trailblazer is tying up my hoist and I got cars out here blocking so it's just it's easier to just take the car over there and then we can work together on it because the transmission we can knock out real quick I think we're gonna have to drill a couple holes for the cross member because I think that's for a turbo 400 bolt the shifter down drill a hole through that through the floor for that cable just little stuff like that but it shouldn't take super long it's a classic carbureted car so there really isn't too much going on so i think we should be able to actually drive the thing at least up and down the driveway by the end of this video all right i got this thing ready to go on to a trailer i pulled the hood off because uh these hinges are the wrong ones. The hood doesn't bolt on right. So I just pulled it off for now. Also, this hood doesn't have the front latch. Didn't wanna just have to go hook onto the trailer. We'll get this thing loaded up. I might pull the trailer down there and kind of ghost ride this thing around a little bit. But yeah, should be able to get most of the drivetrain knocked out today. I know there's gonna be some little things like the throttle cable bracket uh, that I've got one. I'll just have to see if I can modify it to make it work. Things like that. Ugh. All right, here we go. Gotta go way right. Uh, way back left. Should be perfect. That side looks good. How are we looking over here? Oh, damn, dude, I could not have done much better. I could not have done much better. She needs a bath, man. And after I get it running and driving pretty good, I do want to save up and either do some of the body work myself, which I absolutely hate, or take it somewhere and at least have the rust repair done. The front is fine. A little bit wrong with the doors, rockers, rear quarters. The roof looks all good. It's got some, like, uh sun fading but i don't see any holes or anything like that we're gonna try and get her saved try and get her back on the road gonna get this thing unloaded here in a second and uh, start getting to work on it all right Ouch. careful bit of stuff battery converter cross member drive shaft some transmission fluid damn you got a drive shaft in there too yeah Holy this is an old-fashioned five-body trunk now we got to dig out the old transmission jack hoof that thing onto it and try and get it up into place should be a lot easier here than on the floor
Seems like they just don't get our ways They try to control what we say is in bolt it up still have to do the converter getting the cross member in now this is for a turbo 400 so we're just gonna do probably one bolt per side maybe modify it down the road not really gonna worry about it right now the converter is all the way seated probably 3 16 of a gap we might do one thin washer I don't know if it'll really need it though, honestly. This converter doesn't have an anti-ballooning plate. We don't want to push the snout of it into the pump. So that's why we want it to pull away from it a little bit. All right, got the converter bolts in place. Did end up using one small washer just to space it out a little bit. Now I'm going to put some Loctite on it. The red will definitely hold, but uh, the red is like when you never want it to come apart, the blue is if you're gonna take it apart in the future and... Well, if you're good, you never have to take it apart. Yeah, so we'll have to take it apart again. <laughs> if we need the blue. <laughs> Trans is in its final resting place. Torque converter's all bolted up. Converter bolts are all Loctited. Drive shaft is mostly in. Don't have the rear clips for the yoke. Alright, we are finally getting back to work on the Monte Carlo. We've had it pushed off to the side for a little bit while we worked on some other stuff. But hopefully today is the day we actually get this thing running and moving under its own power. There's not a ton of work left to do on the car, but there is a bunch of little stuff. So to try to keep track of that, found the cardboard. Macho Carlo. So of all the things that I know there is left to do, got to finish fuel system. Got to get the trans dipstick in and put fluid in it, some gear oil for the rear end, wire up the fuel pump, brakes are good, uh, install shifter, mount radiator, which isn't crucial because I don't have fans on it right now. Rad fans. Honestly, as long as I only drive it like down the road and back, it's not gonna get hot enough to really worry about that, but that is something that needs to get done. It's not crucial though. I almost forgot. We got to change the motor mounts that bolt to the block. You might be able to tell that the uh, the engine's a little crooked and I'm pretty sure that is because the clamshells that bolt to the block are quite different. I, did, I know that they made two different heights for small block, big block Chevys and I'm not sure if it was the difference between a small block and big block engine. Uh, I've seen some people say it's the difference between two wheel drive and four wheel drive. I, I don't know what the determining factor is there why there's two different ones but I know that there is two different heights and you can't really see that one because it's black but you can see yeah you can kind of see that one there and then that one there is a good I think it's either half inch three quarter of an inch shorter you can see it just on the distance from where it mates to the block to right there versus this one being significantly deeper. 
So because of that, I did end up getting some new motor mounts. And uh, surprisingly, those clamshell mounts are expensive, like 30 bucks a piece. So what I ended up doing, UMI actually makes motor mounts specifically for a uh, small block Chevy G body. They come with all the hardware and everything, and these were like 50 bucks for the pair. Now, I could have bought cheaper solid mounts, but the thing that's nice about these is these are designed to bolt right to the factory frame mounts. So I don't have to pull the engine out and uh, remove the mounts that are bolted to the frame. All I have to do is change the ones that are bolted to the engine, which should be um, probably a big pain in the ass. But a lot easier than I'm pretty sure I'd have to pull the engine to get the frame mounts out. Maybe. Maybe not. So, like I said, really not a big list. I'm pretty sure that's everything. Uh, the only ones to get it drivable are basically everything except the rad fans and mount the radiator. So now is probably where we just cut to a montage and try to get a bunch of work done really quickly. I think we're probably going to end things here. 
Uh, we're still gonna button up a few more things, but we'll do that off camera. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. It means a lot. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.